Hey everyone, Donna here. Germans, I've got some questions for you. If you're new to this channel, I'm an American who has been living here in Germany for around nine years now. Before that, I also lived for a little bit in Prague in the Czech Republic. And on this channel, I make videos on different topics, but a lot of the videos are about my experiences living abroad, some of the differences that I've noticed between living in Germany and the US. And also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, and you can also follow me over on Instagram, at Wanted Adventure. But now, let's get into the questions. Germans, what is up with this bowl? I got this bowl as a gift from some German friends of mine. For the full story behind the bowl, because it's actually a bit of a weird one, you can check out this vlog over here. But yeah, I got this particular bowl, this one right here in my hands, as a gift from some friends of mine here in Germany. And I am not usually someone who likes to look a gift horse in the mouth, but I have to say, I just don't really get the sad face bowl. Like to me, this facial expression looks so sad and it seems a little bit weird to give it as a gift. Like, I don't know, congratulations, here's a sad bowl. And I have since seen bowls with other faces on them in stores around Germany. And I know that there's also a video that goes along with the bowl. I believe, but yeah, I guess I just have to say I don't really get it. So my question here is, what is up with the bowl? Is it a thing here in Germany? Is there something that I'm not getting? Do you have a bowl with a face on it? Have you ever given a sad bowl as a gift? And how would you feel if someone gave you a sad bowl as a gift? Like, happy birthday! Here's a sad bowl. Let me know in the comments, thank you. We live in an apartment here in Germany and in the US, as far as apartments go, there are apartment numbers. So if you're on say the second floor, then there could be apartment 2A, 2B, 2C. If you're on the third floor, there might be apartment 3A, 3B, 3C, and so on. This is not getting into the fact that the third floor in the US is not the same as the third floor in Germany. That's a different topic, maybe for a different video. What I'm focusing on here is the fact that apartments in the U.S. have numbers, apartment 2A, whereas in Germany, the apartment is not labeled with a number, but with the last name. There's the last name on the door, and down at the front door with the buzzer, the doorbell, it's the last name. This kind of surprises me because I have noticed that Germans really seem to value their privacy, and it seems like having an apartment number would be a little bit more private it than having the last name right there on the door and at the buzzer, at the doorbell. Why do apartments in Germany use the last name to label the apartment rather than a number? And what would you prefer? Do you like having the last name there for the apartment? Or would you prefer maybe some more privacy with just a number like 2A, 2B? Let me know down in the comments. awkward silence in an elevator. In the US, we often make a little small talk with the other people in the elevator in order to avoid that dreaded awkward silence. Living here in Germany, over the years I've learned that Germans don't really seem to love making small talk. Like small talk is not a thing here in Germany like it is in the US. So my question here is when it comes to being in an elevator with other people, what is worse for you? Making a little small talk with the people to avoid awkward silence, is that worse? Or is the awkward silence worse? Or maybe there's just no awkward silence in Germany. Maybe that just doesn't even exist here? Is there awkward silence in Germany? Is that a thing? Let me know down in the comments. What's up with wanting beers to come with so much foam at the top? In the US, this would be considered bad. This is a bad beer. People who pour drinks in the US are trained to pour them without any foam at the top. So I guess they just let the foam like pour out and go down the drain. In the US, beers are usually served with the liquid going all the way up to the rim of the glass. Whereas here in Germany, Germans seem to really 
want there to be a lot of foam at the top. Why? What does the foam do for the drink? To me, it just seems like it takes up space in the glass and now you have to get through the foam to get to the drink and then you get like the little foam mustache. Does it add to the flavor of the drink or is it just part of the experience? Why do Germans like so much foam at the top of the beer? A shower with a shower curtain. That's what we have here in our apartment and that's what I'm used to from the US. So this here is a bathtub. You can take a bath in it, but it's also a shower and we shower with the shower curtain closed. But I have definitely been to homes here in Germany where people have this kind of a bathtub with a shower head and they don't have another standalone shower in the home. This is the only one, but there's no shower curtain. And I'm really confused by this. I really don't understand how this works. I have stayed in some places where this is the case, where there's like a bathtub with a shower head, but no shower curtain. I have made such a mess trying to shower. I've gotten water all over the bathroom. I really don't know how it works. Unless you only take baths, in which case, why do you have a shower head extension like this? How can you shower in a bathtub shower like this without a shower curtain? Please let me know down in the comments. I've tried sitting down to do it. You know, sitting down with this, I still get water everywhere. I've tried standing and like going towards the wall. You know, I still get water everywhere. Please tell me how it works. Let me know down in the comments. If you have a car, do you have a little stuffed animal hanging out in the front or back window? I've noticed that this seems to be a bit of a thing here in Germany. We have one. It's a dog stuffed animal and his name is Rusty. Do you have one? And if so, what kind and what's their name? Do they have a name? What is this? What part of the body do you think this is specifically made for keeping warm here in Germany. Coming from the US, if I saw this and I wasn't told what it was, then I can imagine maybe I would think some kind of shawl? Or yeah, if somebody told me that it is to be worn around the torso area, then maybe I'd just think, okay, yeah, you know, if it's cold out, another layer. It's just another layer to keep you warm, not let your body get cold. But in Germany, this actually has a very specific purpose. It's not just for warming the body in general, like I might think it would be for. This is called a Nierenwärmer in German and that literally translates to kidney warmer. This here in Germany is specifically called a kidney warmer and it's specifically for keeping the kidneys warm. Growing up in the US, it was not on our radar to keep the kidneys warm. We were definitely told if it's cold out, you should bundle up and keep warm in general. And yeah, I can see how that might be helpful to have another layer for keeping your body warm. Like in the US, we didn't want to be cold, but it wasn't a thing like make sure to keep your kidneys warm, like specifically the kidneys. So my question here is, do you own a Nierenwärmer? Just one or more than one? Do you wear it on a regular basis in the winter or how do you decide if you wanna wear it or not? And did you grow up learning that it's important for you to specifically make sure that your kidneys don't get cold. Here in Germany, it's pretty common for people to use the 24 hour clock. Whereas in the US on a day-to-day -day basis, it's pretty common for people to use the 12 hour clock with AM and PM. But I think I have noticed something about when Germans verbally say the time. Sometimes Germans do say something like lass uns um 14 or treffen using the 24 hour clock. But I feel like I've also heard Germans sometimes not use the 24 hour clock when speaking. So saying like, like lass uns um zwei Uhr nachmittags treffen or maybe just lass uns um zwei Uhr treffen. I don't know. When you say the time out loud, do you say 
14, 15, 16, and so on? Or would you say like Ein Uhr, Nachmittags? Let me know down in the comments. I feel like I have noticed some differences in how Germans feel toward other Germans just kind of randomly throwing English words into an otherwise German sentence. Maybe like, wo sind meine Headphones? So it's a word that does have a German equivalent. And yeah, I feel like some Germans think this is pretty cool. And then I think there are other Germans who just don't really care. They're indifferent, like do it or don't do it. I really couldn't care less. And then I think there are also some people who don't like it. They really dislike Germans using sometimes English words in otherwise German sentences. And so I would just love to hear down in the comments, how do you feel about it and why? And also, does it matter why are they doing it? Like for example, in Stefan's case, he speaks so much English with me that I think sometimes he really just doesn't remember the German word for something. And so he uses the English word kind of in the same way that when I'm speaking English now, sometimes I just can't remember the English word. And so I use a German word. So does it make a difference to you why the person is doing it? If they're just doing it because they like English? Yeah, there could be so many different reasons that someone is doing it. I mean, I love Danglish, so I think you know how I feel about this. I love the mixing of languages. For me personally, sometimes I do it just because I want to. Sometimes I do it because I really don't know or I can't remember the word or maybe I like the other word more. So yeah, I would just love to hear your thoughts, your take on it. What do you think down in the comments? So my question for you is, okay, this video has been a video of questions, but one last question. What other questions do you have for Germans? Please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos, you can subscribe to the channel. You can also hit that like button and you can ring the notification bell so you can find out when I put a new video out. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Wanted Adventure so you can hear me speaking Danglish. Until next time, Auf Wiedersehen.